Uh, we compared stent-assisted coiling, which is the old fashion of treating aneurysms with, with flow diversion, and we showed that flow diversion has more uh, durability. One, once we place this flow diverter, we are covering branching vessels. So we had to look at those branching vessels. Is there a risk of occlusion of branching vessels? And the most important one is the ophthalmic artery. Well, the risk of occluding the ophthalmic artery is around 15 to 20%, but the majority of those are not symptomatic. Flow diversion for bifurcating aneurysms. Usually flow diversion is only for sidewall aneurysms, but you can use it in bifurcating aneurysms if you don't have any better option. This is the case of an MCA a fusiform aneurysm that was clipped and recurred. As I said, once an aneurysm is clipped, you need to avoid going back to try to do an open surgery because of, of the risk of injuring the brain with fibrosis and, and adhesions. And this in this case, we, we use the flow diverter, the pipeline, you see the remodeling of the vessels. This is a big giant aneurysm where this the whole MCA is all ballooned up. This is a really big problem to have because you cannot replace the vessel. What are our options here? The open option is to shut down the vessel and do a bypass with the risk of having thrombosis of the bypass and major stroke. And what we did is we placed the flow diverter all the way with some coals, and this is the remodeling of, of the vessel. Another distal fusiform aneurysm that we treated with pipeline, you see the pipeline, the stent here. Another PCA aneurysm on a patient where what we did is we placed two pipeline, and you see here completely remodeled and the aneurysm is gone. A pica distal aneurysm, where before that, the only option here would be to shut down the vessel and do a pica to pica bypass. We were able to remodel it with a flow diverter all the way here. And then this is our series in, in pica aneurysms and distal brain aneurysms treated with flow diversion. Originally, when the FDA approved the pipeline, on label was only aneurysms of the internal carotid artery. But then, as I said, we started using it as more dis in more distant vessels, and it showed that it is uh, efficacious. Pipeline for ruptured aneurysms, we try to avoid that. Why? Because those are ruptured aneurysms, and you need to load the patient with Plavix and baby aspirin, which can be dangerous. But in cases, we showed that in cases where you don't have a better option for those aneurysms, pipeline could be a, a, an option. This is a case of a ruptured aneurysm from a dissecting vertebrobasilar junction dissecting aneurysm. That's the dissection. In this case, the open option is to go in. Once you open it, well, you see that the vessel is completely damaged. You don't have any other option than shutting it down. With pipeline, you have the option of reconstructing it by placing telescoping pipelines in this. And that's what we did and reconstructed the vessel. Another case of an MCA ruptured aneurysm, you, what you see here is calcification. And those are the most uh, complex and challenging one to treat because they are like a piece of rock. This is not a CTA, this is not with contrast. This is a CT head showing this hyperdensity. It means this is calcification. In this case, you see that's what's the part that's filling. And we decided to use a flow diverter to treat that, you see the complete occlusion, that's the flow diverter. And you see here on regular x-ray, this calcification where the aneurysm was, and you see the pipeline there. Another case of a pica dysplastic aneurysm, it's a fusiform dissecting aneurysm, really nasty. Again, we were able to place a pipeline and then reconstruct the vessel. As you see here, the vessel is all reconstructed. You don't see the aneurysm anymore. And this used to be a no-no before. It's like a ruptured aneurysm, you cannot use a flow diverter, or a small vessel like this, you cannot use a flow diverter. But more and more, we know that it is safe to do that when you, have, you don't have a better option. This is a ruptured aneurysm from a blister mid-basilar ruptured aneurysm, as you see here. Open surgical option, nearly inexistent. It's really challenging with high risk. What we did is we treated it with pipeline. You see the complete remodeling of the vessel and a nice result. So treating blister-like aneurysm with pipeline is, is a great option whenever you don't have a, a better option for that. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.